You're about to discover the five times you should choose a barge cruise in Europe over a river cruise. I'm Gary Bembridge. This is another of my tips for travelers. I'm just recently back from a barge cruise through France on Crossy Europe, Deborah, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about the five times that I think a barge cruise is a better choice than a river cruise in Europe. The first and one of the most important reasons for choosing a barge over a river cruise in Europe is pace. If you're looking for a vacation which is just much slower, much more relaxing, then take a look at a barge cruise. And the reason for that is the way that barge cruises work. First of all, they cover a much smaller distance. They might travel only 50 to 70 miles across the course of seven days. They travel and cruise much, much slower. An important reason for the pace slowing down is that barges do not cruise at night. Normally what happens is you will have half a day of excursions and half a day of cruising along the canal or if you're cruising along the rivers, along the rivers. And the barge is always docked at night, so it has much less time really that it can be cruising. Often on a river cruise you might cruise all night. So the whole pace slows down because you're going to be spending half of the day on board the barge as you meander along the canals or the rivers. So the pace just slows right, right down. If you're looking for something that's much calmer as a vacation option, a barge is a great option. A second good reason for choosing a barge over river cruise is if you are a very sociable person and you like small, intimate experiences where you really get to know a few people really well. So a river cruise boat will have between 120 to 200 passengers. Barges are much, much smaller. For example, on the Crossy Loop Debra barge, there are a maximum of 22 guests, and many other barges will go even smaller than that. You might find there's an average of 12 guests. So it's a much more smaller, intimate experience, and you're gonna to get to know those people really, really well, because you'll go out on these excursions together, you'll dine together, you'll socialize together, so it's a much more intimate experience. So if you're the sort of person that likes to travel with less people, and you like to get to know people really well. A barge is a really good option. River cruise boats obviously are quite small in terms of the number of people, but this is a much more intimate experience. The third area where a barge cruise could be a really good option is, is if you've traveled quite a lot around Europe, so you've seen quite a lot of Europe, a barge cruise could be a really good alternative because barges, largely because they go on canals, will go to more out of the way places, they might go to quieter places. You know, river cruises go on the big rivers, so they're gonna to go to the big towns. They'll often go to many of the sort of the must-see, big iconic towns. Barges tend not to do that. Because they're going along canals, they'll go to much more out of the way, quieter places, smaller villages and towns. So you're gonna see parts of Europe that you're not gonna see otherwise. And because they go deep inside the countryside, you are going to see some very different things. So if you've seen parts of a country a lot or you've been to all the big iconic places in Europe, a barge is a really interesting way of seeing a very different side of a country because it's going to take you to more out of the way places. So definitely it's a really good thing to think about if you feel you've done quite a lot of Europe or alternatively you don't want to see the obvious things. You want to see much more in-depth and unusual places. A barge cruise is a really good idea if you perhaps are less bothered or have seen all of the big iconic places and you want to see the more out of the way, the more rural, the more countryside parts of a country. It really is definitely going to give you a very different experience. Another reason when a barge cruise may be better than a river cruise is if you're the sort of person that's not bothered with having lots and lots of choice. But first of all, you're going to have less choice of the number of places you can go to. So barges largely cruise on canals. So about 95% of all barge cruises in Europe are on canals. These are man-made waterways built largely in the 18th century, and they were really designed to transport goods around about Europe before railways came along, and of course then eventually road haulage came along. So 95% of barge cruises go along canals. Because of the nature of where canals are, where you can do barge cruises, they tend to be mostly in France. You can do some in England, you can do some in Scotland, some in Ireland. And there are a few sort of in the Holland, Belgium area, but there's much less choice of places you can go to. Unlike on river cruises where there are a multitude 
of providers. There are many, many different cruise lines offering river cruises. Barges is much less so. So, for example, there are only about three or maybe four key providers of barge cruises around Europe. Cross Europe is one of them, for example. They focus mostly on France. Also, then, once you're on board, there is much less choice because obviously the boats themselves are much smaller. So if you take, for example, the Deborah barge, there are obviously the cabins. Then on the main level, you had a dining room, you had a little bar area and you had a lounge area. Then outside, there was an open seating area where sometimes we could eat or you could relax and a hot tub. There's also an upper level, like a sun deck level. On many barge cruises, the sun deck level is closed when you're cruising because the level of the bridges is quite low. So it, you actually can't be out on top deck. So in many barge cruises, if you're heading along canals, you can only use the sun deck when you're docked. A lot of our cruise took place on the river because the water level was very low in the canal. So we actually went on the Yon and the Seine River. So actually the top deck was available much more often when we were cruising. So you're not gonna find things like fitness centers, workout rooms, alternative dining venues, swimming pools, all that kind of stuff that you might find on modern river cruise ships, you're not gonna have, you're gonna have much less choice. Another key area where you're gonna have less choice is when it comes to dining. On river cruises, you'll often have very big menus with lots of choice, you know, multiple starters, main courses, desserts. On barge cruising, you tend to have a set menu. So again, let me give you an example on my cruise. Breakfast was a buffet breakfast, so the usual things, pastries, fruit, yogurt. The lunches were a set menu, it was a four course menu, so the food was very, very good and very gourmet-like. You'd have a starter, a main course, a cheese course, and then a dessert course, but it was a set menu. So you had one starter, one main course, two cheeses, and one dessert. And the only time that would vary is if you had dietary issues, which you'd arranged with the cruise line and the chef before and once you're on board. So it was a set menu. The evening meal, again, a set menu, a starter, a main course, and a dessert. So unlike on river cruising on a barge, you have very good food, very high quality gourmet cooking, but you don't have a choice. On many of the cruises, you'll find it's very specific to the region. So on a French barge cruise, you'll get lots of real classic French dishes. Another area where you're gonna have less choice is when it comes to excursions. So excursions will be included and every day you'll have one excursion, but there won't be a choice of excursions. Everyone will do that one excursion. Of course, on rivers, they do have often a lot of choice of excursions. They might have more active ones through to much more relaxing, calming, walking tours. On a barge cruise, you will have an excursion every day, but not a choice of excursions. But if that doesn't bother you, you're really there for the pace, the experience, and you wanna have good food, you know, you're gonna see the sights, and you're gonna be able to relax and have kind of what you need on hand, but not lots of choice. Definitely then a barge is something worth looking at. Another key consideration is if you're not bothered about your cabin as being a pretty functional place. On a river cruise, you can get pretty big cabins, you can get suites, you can get cabins with balconies, but the cabin can become a place where you can retreat to and you might want to spend time relaxing in. On a barge, that's very different. The cabin is a much more practical place. So for example, on Deborah, it had two single beds, quite a lot of storage, a little seating area, and then it had an ensuite bathroom with a shower but it's a pretty small, compact space. It's not the sort of place that you're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time relaxing and chilling out in. You're gonna to need to spend that more in the public areas. It's not really a place to retreat to because it's a smaller, more compact space, and it's a much more functional space. So if you're not that bothered about having a bedroom that you want, can spend time in, or a balcony, a private balcony you wanna spend time on, a barge is definitely something to think about. I had a great time on my barge cruise and it really opened my eyes to an alternative and different way of traveling. It's definitely something I am going to do much more of. I like river cruising and I really liked barge cruising. If you're interested in going on a barge cruise or even a river cruise, I have many more videos about barge and river cruising and of course ocean cruising too. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?